We are feasting. I love the smorgasbord of the, that the Father puts in front of us. Krista, authentic, vulnerable, thank you for opening that up for us. And today is just continuing, yeah? So um, there's something for everyone. If any of these stories haven't hit you specific in your sweet spot, just hold on. Holy Spirit's not done. So we are going to continue. Why don't we all stand? Um, I want us to say the scripture together. Can we do that? Proverbs 31, 25. Here we go. She is clothed with strength and dignity and laughs without fear of the future. Yeah. So why don't you turn to somebody and just belly laugh at the fear of the future. I mean, let it rip. <laughs> yep. We are laughing at the fear of the future. Come on. <laughs> Woo. Do you feel that? Do you feel that? Yeah. Come on. Sometimes we're not very dignified. We just got to laugh it off. Laugh it off. Yeah. So we can laugh at, at the fear because he operates in love always. Bill Johnson says there's only two places we respond from, fear and love. And when I heard that statement, it was actually life transforming for me because I can always judge myself. What am I coming from? Um, I kind of suckered you in. You just laughed at the fear of the future, but you don't know what my topic is. <laughs> so it's about the fear of ladies, relationships. That's one of my fears that I've had to get over. I, when Deb was talking about that, I'm going, oh, girl, I'm, I'm so with you right now. I mean, we've talked. I've, I've been here for a long time. We go, oh, no, no ladies group. No, we're, we're good. We don't need ladies conferences. We're good. I'm so with her. And then this happened, and I'm so for us. I'm so for this conference and um, just amazed that the Father changes our minds. Um, Jesus is about relationships. Every time he healed someone, he turned them to their community afterwards. Read through scripture. Every time he healed someone, he sent them back to their people. So we do need one another. We are created for relationships. Do you guys all believe that? Yeah, Tammy, I know you do. I, I believe, though, the reason we can laugh at the fear of the future in relationships is because he is our source. He is the reason we can belly laugh even when we don't feel like it. He is our source. In a group this size, I know there's a lot of cringing going on. If you actually get us any group of ladies, there's cringing when you say, let's talk about relationships. F the fear of other ladies, They're, it's a real deal, right? Some of you, um, or saying, I'm lonely. I don't know what to do about it. There's no one I want relationship with. Uh, yeah, somebody's laughing about it. That's awesome. <laughs> no, Irene, you want relationship with everybody. I know you. I've, I've chosen four I wonder ifs, and I want to I do them um, just if some of them fit you, take it on, because we're going to deal with these today. I wonder if I'm worthy of being known. I wonder if anyone notices me. I wonder if I'll ever be loved. I wonder if I will ever have a friend. John 15 says this, as you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. Is that brilliant? When he is our source, Fruitfulness comes, and as, a, as, his sor as our source, it, he gets to choose the fruit, but it streams from us. We can't hide it. We can't, you know, just keep it in. So God is my source, and I remember the season when I learned it. 
when I learned the truth of him being my source. You've heard a lot of stories already. I'm going to share one of my stories. Um, Gary and I have been married over 31 years. And I, isn't that awesome? Yeah. And you know him. He's, a, he's just this amazing man. But um, we started 31 years ago. Um, I didn't quite know that the father was my source. Got married at 25. And as a single the Father had always been my source during my single years. He was my source for friendships. He was my source for financial input. He was my source for emotional stability. Um, he was my source for spiritual growth. Everything that I was about, I went to him. And I knew this really well. But I got married, and um, when Gary came in my life, for some reason, I don't know why, but I put all of those expectations on my husband. Has anybody done that? Yeah? All, a lot of you. So one day, somebody's waving at me. Yeah, that's me. Um, one day, I was complaining to the Holy Spirit, and I said, Gary is not being the spiritual leader that I need in my home. What are you going to do about this? Holy Spirit said, well, I, I get it. I, I agree with you. He's not meeting your expectation. But he didn't agree with me that that was okay. So he said, well, haven't I always been that for you? I said, yeah, but he's my husband. Isn't that his job now? And Holy Spirit's just like, no, I'm still, that's still my job. You and I, girl, we got this going. That's not changing. So I thought, okay. So I took Gary off that expectation hook, took him off the hook, and he didn't even, poor Gary, he did not even know what was going on. <laughs> but things got a little bit easier for him. And I'm sure he was grateful, but he didn't know what he was grateful for. So um, a few weeks later, again, I'm with Holy Spirit, and I am an emotional wreck. We've been married for a bit now, and um, I married into a blended family, so I've got two children. I'm wife for the first time, mother for the first time, so that means I also have an ex-wife in the picture. Um, during that same time, my father, who is a preacher my whole life, decided he was homosexual and left my mom. So I had all this going on, all of it, within the first couple years of our marriage. So Gary was not providing me emotional stability. And I was not okay with that. So, I mean, I, and I, I, handedly, I was a wreck. And so I'm going to Holy Spirit again. And he goes, wow, Carissa, I'm here for you. I'm your source. I am your source, Gary. Let's take him off that hook, too. So we took Gary off that hook, too. And um, over the, I, I'm a slow learner. Three years of this. Different hooks, Gary got to get off the hooks. And um, three years in, I've, it finally clicked with me, the revelation that the Father is still my source for everything, for everything. The thing I didn't quite get, went to Holy Spirit, and I go, well, what is Gary good for then? <laughs> Literal question. You know my husband. He is amazing. But what was he good for? So, I was, I was raised on having meat and potatoes every night for dinner. Growing up, my parents are from the Northwest, meat and potatoes. So Holy Spirit knows me. My question, what was Gary good for? His response, he's your gravy. That was Holy Spirit's response to me. He is your gravy. Girls, I know what gravy is. That is what makes everything taste good. Everything. Woo! Yeah, I know it puts you on the hips too. Yeah. But it makes everything taste good. And Gary is the thing, the person in my life who makes everything taste good. He's the flavor. He's, the, he's why I want to eat the meat and potatoes. You know, you, you eat the meat and potatoes so you can have the gravy. Yeah. So, that revelation 
got me going. So not only did I have to take Gary off all of those expectation hooks, I had to take my family and my friends and my church leaders off all, the, say it again, church leaders, <laughs> off the expectation hooks. So I just want to do a super quick little activation. I want you to close your eyes. And Holy Spirit is going to show you one person in one area that you have on an expectation hook. So Holy Spirit, you're here. You're so about this. You're about freedom. So show each individual one person in one area that they have on an expectation hook. The one area that's supposed to be between you and them. You are their source. Thank you, Father. So I don't want you to go too deep there because you might have a lot of people on your, your hooks. Pull up, but go back to Holy Spirit. Don't let this activation be just a one-off. Make sure you finish it with him. Whatever that looks like for you. For me, I had, I had so many hooks on my wall. But the revelation comes, and then Holy Spirit just helps you clean it right up. So one of the hardest things you'll ever do is have relationships. It's also one of the most rewarding because relationships give us life. There's been time and times in my life where I swore I'd never have another girlfriend again. <laughs> Girls are fickle. I'm more of a tomboy. I don't need a lot of frill and just stuff. You know, I, want, I need shoes. That's all I need is shoes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but um, I remember the day I declared to the heavens, to all up there that was listening, angels and Jesus and everybody, I will never have a girlfriend again. They're, it's too hard. So I got crickets, you know, that silence from heaven. Do you ever get that when you're, when you're talking? And um, so I thought, well, I'm, I didn't get struck down, so that's a good thing. But I'm not hearing anything, and I don't like that either. So just a few weeks later... I got a new job, and the gal that was my boss um, was an acquaintance of mine. And our office was were so small that we almost sat on top of each other. And I was there for five years, and we became very, very close. And at the end of that five years, I realized that the Father redeemed relationships with other women for me. He's all about it. And he's going to get you, you know, the Jehovah Sneaky. He's going to get you one way or the other. But he did it, and I, I have never declared that. I've never said that again, and now I don't want it. I need relationships with other females, not just my husband, not just my kids. We need each other, yeah? The scripture I want to use is Proverbs 27, 9, and this is full of God's wonder for us. Sweet friendships refresh the soul and awaken our hearts with joy. For good friends are like the anointing oil that yields the fragrant incense of God's presence. Is that powerful? I, have, I do Proverbs every month, and so I've read this, you know, I'm, I'm a preacher's kid. I've read it thousands of times. But there's been two times in my life when I've read it, and the Holy Spirit said, look at this verse again, and send it. And I've sent it to two different people in my life and just took a picture of it, texted it to them and said, this is who you are to me. You're my sweet friend. And this is what it does to me when I think of you. And those are powerful, powerful words. So go back and ruminate on it whenever you want. Um, I want you to pray about your relationships. We don't take them lightly. We, we do this with Holy Spirit. And there's all different kinds of relationships. Some are, are just temporary. They're seasonal. There's even a scripture about that in uh, Proverbs 18. Some friendships don't last for long. Have you found that to be true? Yeah. But there is one loving friend that's joined to your heart closer than any other. And, of course, that's Jesus because he's our source of all.
So I'm just asking you to ask the Holy Spirit for the right people in your lives, for the right timing of your lives, whether it's seasonal or functional or temporary, or maybe you have long-lasting friendships. That's beautiful. Um, but he knows you. Holy Spirit knows you so well that he knows exactly what you need in all those areas. One of my favorite chapters is Psalm 139. It shows us the intentionality that he, that he like the God and wisdom, created us with such intentionality. And that whole chapter of 139, if you've read it 100 times, read it again. If you've not read it at all, read it 100 times. It gets in your spirit, and it gives you the identity of how you were created. Um, one of the verses says, I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. <laughs> We're complex. We got the crazy going on sometimes. <laughs> we are complex. But the very next scripture says, how thoroughly you know me. So how amazing is it? He made us complex. He made us this way. But then he immediately responds and says, but I know you. I know all the complexities of your life. I know you. So I want you to close your eyes. I'm going to go through the, the four I wonder ifs again, and I'm going to respond with a scripture from 139, and this is how Jesus responds to these I wonder ifs. I wonder if I'm worthy of being known. Oh, how thoroughly you know me, Lord. I wonder if anyone notices me. Every single moment you are thinking of me. I wonder if I will ever be loved. How precious and wonderful to consider that you cherish me constantly in your every thought. I wonder if I will ever have a friend. There is one loving friend who is joined to your heart closer than any other. Isn't that beautiful? He has a response for every I wonder if in your life. It's in scripture. It's in conversation with Holy Spirit. It might even be with your friends. But he's got answers. Everything that we give away, we have to receive first from him. That's very clear in scripture. But we have relationship. We have intimacy with him. We have friendship with him. And then we can give it away. We really can't give it away until we receive it. Is that right? Yeah. Um, I think communion is one of the best examples of that. Um, he showed us that we first receive from him and then we give away. Jesus broke bread at the Last Supper with the very person that betrayed him. So he took the sting of betrayal for us and now we get to receive the healing of betrayal. And then we get to give away that healing. Isn't that beautiful? Communion is, is an amazing part of, of what we do as Christians, but I think we don't know the fullness of it. I don't think we'll ever know the fullness of it. Um, we eat from the bread of life of Jesus. We eat from him. And then we pass on the bread of our life and we break our lives open for others to feed. But it's feeding on him first. We fellowship with Jesus first. And then we get to fellowship with others. First Corinthians talks about communion and it says, discern one another's needs. Do it often and remember me. So we eat of him and it's life. And then we pass that on. You know, I don't have friendships all figured out. I'm old, but I don't have it all figured out. I'm going to continue to risk. I've been hurt. I'll probably get hurt again. Temporary. Temporary hurts. But I have loved, and I will continue to love, and I will grow in relationships, and I will continue to grow because they are life to us as believers. We need each other. It's life.
The more I pursue friendships and relationships, the more I see the Father move in my life. He uses others. I have a challenge for you when you're breaking bread together today at lunch. All of you that came in by yourself, I want you to look around and get the whole room off your expectation hook. (laughs) Get them off your hook and then be the brave one and ask them, can I join you for lunch? Good idea? We are going to stomp on the wonder ifs in relationships. We cannot tolerate them. And if we don't activate it, it's just a theory. Does that make sense? So we don't want theories. We don't want to go away today with theories. We want to activate. And so I'm going to challenge you for the lunch today. Um, I'm going to have you stand one more time. And we're going to say the scripture again together. And then we're going to do something with it. Are you ready? She is clothed. Say it with me. She is clothed with strength and dignity and laughs without fear of the future. So I want you to get in groups of maybe two or three, and I want you to come up with I am worthy statements, declaration, decrees. You're going to say it out loud. And You're going to do it eyeball to eyeball. I don't want none of this laying hands on someone with their eyes closed where you're not connecting. I want eyeball to eyeball, face to face, intimacy, not side armed. I'm serious, girls. There's something about eyeball to eyeball. You, eyes wide open, whether it's I'm worthy of friendships, I'm worthy of intimacy, I'm worthy to have a friend. I'm worthy of being loved. I don't care what your decrees are, but they are decreeing exactly who you are, who the Father says you are, and then you're going to hear it in your own ears, and you're going to be reminded of that later on. You're going to go, wait a minute, I decreed that to my friend or to someone I didn't even know. I looked him in the eyeball, and I said this. You're going to hear it. The enemy's going to hear it. The heavens are going to hear it, and everyone's going to agree. Is that good? Okay, so get in groups of two or three, and you say them out loud, out loud. Eyeball to eyeball. I am worthy of friendships. What are you worthy of? I'm worthy of being known. I'm worthy of being noticed. I'm worthy of being loved. Worthy, worthy, worthy. I am worthy. Declare it. Declare it. Declare it. This should be fun, gals. We're stomping on the enemy. No more lies. Okay, so you're breaking off loneliness. You're breaking off isolation. You're, that's, you're decle- decreeing and declaring. Okay. Oh, you guys are going for it. All right, keep standing. Ladies. All right, I want you now to laugh with each other, the fear of the future. Laugh out loud, LOL. Come on. Yeah. (laughs) 
You have just taken territory. Yeah. Laugh out loud. They don't want to stop.